Hello my friends and channel subscribers, Greg here from Brisbane with another uncut, unbiased, no bull video. I created a series uh, about our journey with Tesla Powerwall 2, starting with why we bought it, then installations and then third forward. And there were a lot of comments on my channel and one of them was a question about VPP or it stands for virtual power plant. Let me explain my thoughts about this. But before I start, can you please do me a huge favor, subscribe, like this video, and click that notification bell so you don't miss any of my future videos on, on this channel. All right, um, I'm not against virtual power plant and I believe it's the best way for corporations and government to install uninterrupted power supply for whole Australia or pockets of Australia without capital investment. Uh, it's quite decentralized, it's, it's a great idea, but more and more I look at the value proposition about virtual pl power plants, I don't think it has one, at least for me. What I'll do, this video will be a little bit different. Usually I provide my opinion and my thoughts and all of that, um, that based on some sort of solid evidence. I don't know entire story, but I opened the page with power plant comparisons, virtual power plant. And as I read this page, I will brainstorm my thoughts about it. First of all, uh, we've got good news. There's a couple of uh, companies provide virtual power plant support. Some of them very generous. They will uh, pay quite a big chunk of battery price to you um, uh, so they can use your battery for virtual power plant. Um, let's talk about money first. Uh, let's say um, you can... I would like to focus on Tesla Powerwall 2 as a per title of my video. And um, it's easy for me because the price more or less standard, the um, offerings are more or less standard and everything is quite clear. If you take other batteries in consideration, it's really hard to speculate what it is and what it isn't. So let's assume, and by no means it's true, that full price for battery installation and purchase it's fifteen thousand dollars in australia i know some people buy it for maybe 12 some for 20 and then subsidies on top of that so it becoming cheaper but uh, i would like to take average price and average cost of electricity to explain my thoughts about it so let's assume you bought your battery at fifteen thousand dollars let's assume you had a um, one of the providers supporting you uh, with generous um, injection of cash to to provide viability to buy the battery. Let's say you're out of pocket for um, I don't know between five to eight thousand dollars, right? Still a lot of money, uh, and you put the battery in, and the whole idea of the battery in my mind, it's to have electricity when others don't have that luxury. That means if you got significant power outage more than a minute, you can keep running your cooking appliances, your fridges, um, and hot summer day for people that sensitive to temperature or winter day air conditioners, things like that. To me, the first no-no uh, about virtual power plant, it's a small print when, for example, AGA, AGL explicitly says we reserve right uh, to drain your battery in a major event at least three times a year. I'm just looking at my Tesla Powerwall. Maybe I'm lucky. Maybe it's a suburb that I live in, don't have uh, many outages. In the last year, we had only one significant outage, which was more than um, two minutes, and it was three hours, 27 minutes, as my, per my previous videos. And imagine if in this particular outage, my electricity provider would drain my battery. 
So my first thought is, okay, so I spent all that money, maybe not the full amount, right? But I spent all that money, I bought the battery, and only moment when I need it, I don't have it, right? That's the showstopper right there for me. That's where I would say I'm not signing up for virtual power plant, however good it does for the whole community. I don't have any spare money, I'm not a rich person. So that's the first thought. Second, let's move beyond that. Let's say you accept that point, a new person that can afford battery, person that care about community because you have money and you can provide. Um, and you bought it for financial reasons. For example, you buy electricity expensive and you sell it cheap and you believe your battery can be a good buffer between your solar system and your grid. Um, that it will pay for itself just because of the difference in price with electricity on top of other incentives. I did a bit of calculations today, uh, just in my mind, and, and there's by no means the true numbers. But think about that, is um, if you paid, let's say, five to seven thousand dollars for battery after all the subsidies and virtual power plant uh, incentives, and you run battery and solar, you may look at my, I think, second video where I describe, or third video, I don't remember, that I describe, I think it's the third one, when I describe the round trip of electricity within a system, you will see that conversion from AC to DC to AC and back would be efficiency of minus 15%. And I thought, all right, if I basically generate on annual average around 30 kilowatts of power a day, which is summer close to 40 to 42, winter close to 20 to 30, on average, let's say 30 kilowatts a day. If my uh, round trip efficiency with the battery is 15% uh, less, that's basically I'm um, losing 4.5 kilowatts on battery a day. And if I cannot be in charge of my battery when I charge and discharge it, that's the money lost right there. What I'm trying to say is, if your battery is subsidized and you're not controlling the way it performs, you could be in financial disadvantage based on uh, electricity prices, based on uh, small print, how your battery will be discharged without your input and how much you got residual for battery to pay. So I did not see any good plan that would provide enough incentive to me that I would join virtual power plant. I think it will be a second part of this video. This video is just to instigate that discussion within, I guess, you know, uh, everyone around the world would be interested in what's going on here, but particularly among fellow Australians, what they feel about uh, virtual power plant. I would like to hear from people that accepted the offer from virtual power plant and how they feel about this. I would like them to actually write comment what triggered them to install the battery. Um, I do believe some areas may have uh, frequent power outages and if you got only three legal discharges maybe you know there's a benefit that battery would cover others when your electricity provider cannot drain your battery for you it's an interesting topic it's not clear cut i know that from my perspective how much incentive i got for my battery what i purchased battery for and also um financial um i would say return or, or um return on investment wouldn't be viable if I would join virtual power plant regardless how much money they pay me or currently on the market offerings. So thank you so much for watching. Please comment down below and let's keep the discussion going. Until next time, Greg from Brisbane.